Pardon? Let the record reflect we have reconvened with all members present as we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask you to remain standing. standing. just want to have a uh, moment of silence in memory of Helen Mead Platt. She is the mother of Harding Committeeman and former Mayor Nick Platt. Uh, Mrs. Platt also was a great granddaughter of, of Marcellus Hartley and she was very close to her mother's first cousin Marcellus Hartley Dodge. Her love of the outdoors translated to her passion for preserving open space, space that many of us enjoy as we take advantage of some of the bike paths of Luwanaga Park. So let us now take a moment of silent thought and prayer in memory of Helen Mead Platt and her family that she leaves behind. Thank you. Okay, uh, motion for the minutes of executive minutes of July 24th, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion for the regular minutes of July 24th, 2017. I move them. Second. Any discussion, corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome all, and welcome to our newest resident, Doug Osborne. <laughs> 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 And um, it's been three weeks for our last meeting, so I want to uh, get some updates in here and uh, some of the usual things. But uh, first is recognizing our Employee of the Month for August, Fred Rivera of the uh, uh, Department of Public Works for his commitment and dedication as evidenced by excellent job he did maintaining the Madison Junior Softball fields for the Madison Softball. And I've heard um, also from our um, Little League president the excellent work that has been done by DPW on all the fields. And uh, as it has been three weeks since our last meeting, and we have a little uh, break, Louise, good to see you. As we only have one meeting this month, um, I just want to share some of the things that have happened and uh, bring you up to date. Um, during the last week of July, I had the opportunity to go visit Camp Spears uh, in the Poconos and have lunch with Caitlin. Caitlin is a counselor from Union Beach, a counselor who's Camp experience started the summer after Sandy, whose resident camp experience would not have been hmm. possible without the generosity of residents and businesses of, of Madison. And um, I could just, in a conversation sitting with Caitlin, really felt the impact of what we were able to do for not only the Caitlins of Union Beach, but others. Um, I don't know where she would be if it wasn't for camp and or the generosity, but uh, I'm pretty sure she might not have been that confident, soon-to-be high school senior who was looking forward to college. So again, thank you for all of Madison for making a difference. Uh, paving, if you've been driving around the last couple of weeks, uh, we may hear more in one of the reports. You've witnessed an army of trucks, equipment milling, and overlaying many roads. And you've seen um, or many police, some from neighboring communities, providing support. So I want to thank all the borough staff, especially our engineering department, for this uh, very large, ambitious uh, project this summer. And um, I want to also thank the many residents of Madison for your patience as we've been doing this. But it's uh, great to see these um, the roads in great shape. Um, an update on the bamboo. Uh, we have copies available here, but tomorrow there will be a discussion of the Board of Health on the ordinance to revise the nox noxious and invasive plant ordinance. Um, it looks like my printer is fading on me. The, um, it will include uh, planting, growing, uh, maintaining noxious or invasive, invasive plants, and already there is uh, attention to ragweed, poison sumac, and other noxious and poisonous weeds, but it will also include native and non-native invasive vines, vegetation uh, that have roots extend across uh, or branches extend across the neighboring yards. 
<coughs> and will be include, included but not limited to bamboo. So that will be addressed, and this consistent, as I said before, with previous uh, property maintenance ordinances that it comes to the Board of Health. Uh, theater, we'll certainly be, shortly be hearing from an update on the, uh, from Ray Cody on the theater, but I just want to make sure that um, all sorts of rumors these days that get out there that uh, said that this governing body was taken by surprise uh, by the uh, change of hands of the theater. That certainly was not the case, and you'll be hearing shortly about all the work that has been going on in the background and will continue to try to preserve a downtown theater for Madison. Um, and we certainly, for all those that have shown that passion and have made suggestions on uh, routes we can take, we uh, thank you for uh, working together. And also related to walking community, we've, we've heard in um, multiple meetings suggestions on changing the resolution. And as is often, my process here is we let, have people state their thoughts and not necessarily always provide closure, but it's certainly part of my job is to provide closure and understanding. So um, what I have seen is I want the residents to understand we see no need to change the welcoming resolution. I'm speaking for myself, but I think I have uh, supported most of the uh, council on this. The suggestion of an alternative resolution um, has come out and it's clear that the alternative does not meet the achieved goals that I set forward in, when the resolution was uh, put forth. And one of the key lines is, no department, employee, or official of the Borough of Madison shall condition the provision of borough, borough services or benefits, matters related to citizen, citizenship or immigrant status. And so that is a very important part of the resolution, as well as part of the resolution that talks about adhering to state, federal, and local laws. And we saw that work very well recently with an incident in Madison. And I want to remind people of the, um, sorry, my notes are, my quote from uh, back in um, March, and was also as part of the editorial in the Madison Eagle this past week. It is not the weakening of the enforcement of any laws. It is a confirmation that anyone seeking help from our police department can do so without the fear of consequences or retribution, which makes our community safer for all. It is a commitment to be a welcoming to all who have chosen Madison to be their home. And so that is why we have this welcoming resolution in place. And one last thing I want to address is just a reminder of the, the great partnership we have in this town in making things happen. Some of it happens behind the scenes. For example, I had a uh, phone call from a Lorraine uh, Road resident who was questioning why Lorraine Road was part of the paving project uh, list. And after visiting and having our engineer look at it again, it was decided that it would not be the best use of our tax dollars to repave. It was just going to be half the road, but it's in good shape. We can use our priorities differently. A very nice interact action going back and forth. I stopped by on a Saturday morning and even had a little sit down in the living room. That is a very positive thing. We had some people concerned about how the striping has gone on Dean Street after the paving. A great interaction, and we're correcting some of the uh, things that happened there. And so we'll see some of the uh, double line striping disappear. And the reason I say this is in previous meetings recently, there's been some sharp uh, comments directed towards some of the volunteers that give up their dedicated time to the borough of Madison the volunteers that will make a difference in this town. I think if we have a more positive attitude and come forward saying, let's work together to make this a better town, instead of attacking our dedicated volunteers, we will be far better for it. So thank you for all you do and all the engaged residents of Madison. And with that, let's move on to reports from committees, <laughs> public works and engineering. Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, report from de the uh, Department of Public Works. Um, the mechanics uh, department is, is something that's kind of always, always overlooked at, uh, down at uh, DPW, but um, they really service and repair all the vehicles and the equipment for the police, fire, senior citizens, and all the DPW uh, departments. They've actually started to uh, maintain the LEAF machines to get them in order and prepare for the upcoming autumn season that seems to be arriving 
little too soon as far as I'm concerned. It's going to be here. And they're also, uh, they also are working on repairing the street sweeper, uh, which is uh, very important because that, that sweeper goes out very often. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the flower baskets look absolutely beautiful this year. Um, so uh, they have continually uh, watered them and taken care of them. They're um, making sure that all of the, uh, on, on uh, the Museum of Early Trades, they're, they're taking care of all of the trimming and the weeding of the grass there, as well as the general park maintenance. Um, there's something like 50, um, 50 uh, units that they have to take care of that actually belong to the borough. Um, they've been lining the recreation fields for the appropriate games because the recreational department is still busy. Women are playing their softball, and um, we had very active um, uh, recreation uh, this past summer. The roads department replaced all the stairs on the skating rink. Um, they've been installing um, various street signs. Um, they had to help with a water main break. They're repairing curbs. Um, and they're uh, removing trims and trees and topsoils and seeded areas. And every Friday, I don't know if people remember this, but one of the things that they do is if you call and you have a white good, which is a refrigerator, stove, or whatever, they do pick it up. Uh, the sewer department is always busy with repairing catch basins, and they just have daily station operations and maintenance uh, on, on a constant basis. Um, so that's all from there. From um, the engineering department, as the mayor talked about, uh, you know, you, you can't really drive too many streets in this town without hitting um, uh, some kind of work that's being done. But Cephali and Son contracting completed all the drainage curb and sidewalk work on Howell and Locust Street for the 2017 road improvements. Uh, that road looks absolutely great. I was down there the other day, and it looks really good. And those people um, have a nice Belgian block probably for the first time in many, many years. Um, also, Frank Russo uh, did a good job in eliminating, um, taking down a maybe a 100-year-old uh, oak tree that was was there that made the uh, people very happy. Um, drainage improvements are going to start this week on Tracy Lane and Valeview. So, um, you know, we, we're still kind of busy. The milling and paving work for the seven rules in the reconstruction contract are going to start next Monday. Um, the, as you probably noticed, the signal replacement work at Luanica and Woodland intersects, intersection is being done by the County of Morris, and that's going to conclude this month. And as always, public service guests, replacement work on Main Street, east of Greenwood Avenue, has, has been scheduled nights in early September. Um, Stafola contracting is, ex uh, is expected to complete the mill and overlay for Kings Road and Prospect Place today. But I, I think <coughs> it was going to be finished tonight on Kings Road, which uh, would be really very good. And this completes the resurfacing of nine roads in Madison. And um, they all look absolutely great. Um, also, uh, Gen Electric uh, completed upgrades to signals on both the Richdale Park intersection and Woodland Green intersection. So you, the residents should no, notice significantly reduced wait times during the off-peak traffic conditions due to the new signal, uh, signal, uh, signal controllers. Um, if you go up to the MRC, you'll notice that uh, the Nickerson Company installed the press box and la this last week, and will and Bob Vogel will be working on a punch list to make sure that everything is done. But it looks absolutely great up there now with the new bleachers. And also, uh, thanks to Bob and um, and Frank Russo, the Morris County Community Block Grant was awarded uh, in, in the amount of $80,000 to the Borough of Madison for Plain Street Impl Improvements Plan, which will include curb, sidewalk, water service improvements, and repaving. Um, so the state has issued a request letter for 2018 local aid grant of applications, which for Madison will include Greenwood Avenue north of the interstate 
and uh, resubmittals of the bikeway and transit improvement <coughs> projects. So it's been a very busy summer. Thank you. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Nothing from the fire department, and I have a different type of report from the police department this month. Uh, they've provided me with their incident analysis, which kind of which actually talks about the different types of incidents that they've responded to and totals them up. So just bear with me while I go through this. Uh, during the month of July, they had 3,142, I guess, calls for service. And what I'll do is I'll just read off the largest ones. Disorderly conducts, they had 20, 36 calls. Non-criminal investigations, which are investigations that they kind of do behind the scenes, maybe for uh, credit card fraud and whatnot, 86. Uh, 36 traffic incidents, not 652 traffic enforcements, which is probably speeding tickets, and thank God I wasn't one of them. Um, calls for public service, 1,532, <coughs> and I would venture to say that a good portion of those could be medical calls and incidents of that nature. And then finally, assisting other agencies where they've gone out of Madison to help other police departments, which is 59. So very good. That's it. Yep, it's good to Thank you, Mayor. put things in perspective. I'd ask the borough clerk, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on August 1st, $15,000 was paid to the Environmental and Infrastructure Trust for Madison's portion of the debt associated with the Madison Chatham Joint Meeting Sewage Treatment Plant. The borrowings mm -hmm. include both low interest bonds as well as zero interest loans. And tomorrow the borough will be paying. Uh, $283,000 debt payment from the Open Space Trust Fund for the MRC land and turf field. From the tax collector, the tax bills were mailed on Wednesday, July 26th. Uh, residents are reminded that the grace period for the payment has been extended to August 21st. As per state statute, all third quarter tax payments received after August 21st will be subject to interest and that interest must be calculated back to August 1st. And I'd also like to thank the tax collector's office as they've done an ex outstanding job working on collecting 2016 tax delinquencies. As of today, there's only one property scheduled to go on the tax sale, but we are hopeful that it will be resolved in the coming weeks. If that happens, that would mark two years in a row with no tax sale, which is very impressive. Um, for the seniors, um, Richard Cody, John McKeon, and Myla Jacy, our state elected officials from District 27, recently sent out a letter about a program that helps eligible residents reduce their property tax bills. The program is commonly known as the Senior Freeze, and this program helps seniors and disabled residents that meet certain eligibility criteria. The addi there's additional information on this program, and it can be found on the tax collector's page of the postnet. <coughs> And I recommend all seniors uh, go, go. And then um, our CFO, Jim Burnett, had a great idea. He said, let's do a, a seminar for our local students on what it takes to run a local government and <coughs> um, deal with municipal finances. And on this Wednesday, the mayor, the council president, uh, Vitali, and myself um, will the, we'll be meeting with 14 local students to talk about local government and municipal finance. And um, the kids will get to ask questions like, how does the local government work? What is the finance department? Uh, what, does, what do they do? What is it like to be a mayor or a council member? And what are the economics of recycling? How do property taxes work? So we hope that this will be successful and that we can engage our local high school and college students several times a year in this program. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Utilities. Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. There is no report this uh, meeting from the uh, electric department. However, from the water department, there is. And there are a number of things that have occurred since the last report that are a little unusual and hopefully one-offs. For example, the uh, department repaired a six-inch water main break on Dwyer Street, which was due to a paving crew's operation error. So I thought we marked those things, but somehow they missed it. There was uh, a repair to a hydrant damaged by the bleacher contractor at the MRC. 
It was really cleaning up after other people. They helped a homeowner with a wet basement problem, which turned out to be stemming from a roof line and groundwater situation. And they continue, this will be ongoing, they continue in the installation of radio transmitters for remote water uh, meter reading. That project will take some time. I've, we've talked about it before. Definitely a major improvement to the way we collect that data. And then finally, they assisted at St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center with the designing of an alternative water supply for fire protection at that facility. Thank you. Thank you. And health, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, at tomorrow's monthly meeting, the Board of Health will begin reviewing draft ordinances for, as the mayor noted, bamboo and other invasive species, mm -hmm. and also feral cats. Uh, second, the health department is making final preparations for its upcoming flu clinics. Please stay tuned for dates that will be announced. Uh, next, our health educator is working with the Bike and Walk Coalition to create community walking groups originating from our farmer's market. And finally, at the August 17th, 17th Farmer's Market, the Health Department will have a tobacco cessation and awareness booth in collaboration with MASA, uh, the Madison Chatham Coalition, and nurses from Overlook Hospital. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And Community Affairs, Ms. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a big report. Um, <laughs> the DDC recently contracted with Place Codes, who has entered into a partnership with Tap Into for the purchase of their Close By app. This app is designed to bring the best of Madison directly to consumers <clears throat> in one easy to navigate, visually engaging mobile experience. The app will help consumers find local merchants aided by advanced search capabilities, empower local merchants and organizations to de deliver promotion events and other time sensitive information quickly and easily, and most importantly, help consumers find convenient parking. The app is currently being constructed and all Madison-specific information entered. The promotion plan is being created. The tentative launch date is September 18th. The hope is to use the app to promote Bottle Hill Day and promote use of the app at that event, so stay tuned. Mark your calendars between September 7th and 9th. The Chamber of Commerce is planning a back-to-school sidewalk sale. Um, please join us in a DDC-sponsored event celebrating storytelling of all kind, in all of its forms with a day of interactive events and musical performances. The second annual Madison Storytellers Festival is scheduled for Saturday, September 16th from 12 to 5 p.m. on Green Village Road, held on Madison's Culture Corner, Main Street and Green Village Road. Uh, vendors and sponsors are still being sought. Uh, you can contact Lisa Ellis at ddc at rosenet.org. Um, finally, Bottle Hill Day is coming up. It's scheduled for Saturday, October 7th from 10 until 6. Again, the Madison Chamber of Commerce and the Madison PBA 92 will be hosting the popular annual car show in conjunction with Bottle Hill Day. Bottle Hill Day is over 30 years old. It celebrates um, Madison's original establishment in, in 1715 of the village called Bottle Hill. It, it features four stages with live entertainment all day, over 200 vendor booths, amusement rides, great shopping, delicious food, and a beer garden. This event is free and open to the public. Um, some information from the rec department. The fall schedule is underway and will wrap the week of Thanksgiving. There are 14 separate groups using 12 fields this season. The ice rink field, as well as the remediated area at Bailey, at Bailey both remain at rest until spring 2018. Um, this will not preclude flooding the sticking rink for the winter. Um, use of the Memorial Park soccer field will also be scaled back significantly per DPW recommendation. Um, rental revenue from program from the MRC is projected to exceed $35,000 by September. Uh, Nature Nuts recently completed its 40th year. The rec department would like to thank volunteers Kathy Cultis and Paula Locko for their continued contributions to the program, and Diane Mann and Harriet McCarter of the YMCA for providing the program with bus transportation for its field trips to Freelingheisen, Arboretum, and the Raptor Trust. 
Uh, from the Senior Center, um, the Senior Center Director has been working with the staff to help improve the accessibility of the rooms. They have cleared out furniture to not only make it more open, but also more welcoming. They are planning to work with the adult school to order custom plaques for the rooms for better scheduling communication. Uh, the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee will be having a meeting, which is always open to the public, about the Senior Freeze Program, which Ms. Bailey referenced. They encourage residents who may be eligible to come out and learn about how to fill out the application. Um, there is also a scheduled trip to the Lobster Shanty down in Point Pleasant for a nice luncheon. Registration forms are at the Senior Center on the website or at Borough Hall. They will also be sent out with the September newsletter. Um, Leaders in Training, which is a program they've been running with the YMCA, has been a great success. We are hoping to recruit a volunteer to continue the tech assistance program. Um, they recently added a new activity to the senior calendar, Drop-In Cafe. We encourage seniors to come into the office to see our new coffee stand to chat or play some board games on Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Um, and then finally, um, we spoke a lot earlier about um, the, the ride program that was initiated by Tritown 55 Coalition. Um, they reported that be, between the kickoff event on April 3rd and August 4th, <coughs> they have registered over 235 riders and have provided close to 1,000 subsidized rides. Um, they are approaching the Grata Foundation for an additional two-year grant to continue the subsidized rides and promote age-friendly businesses and expand the program to include communication and housing. Sustainable funding sources are being researched and contacted. And that's it. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. And for the uh, uh, theater update, Mr. Cody. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Since the uh, borough attorney has previously opined that the council can't comment publicly on the movie theater issue because there may be a future appeal body for that project zoning application, Mayor Connolly has asked me to review the info that has been shared previously and give an update of actions taken by the administration since the last council meeting. So prior information was the theater was sold in February 2017 for $1.7 million to the Saxon Group. The Saxon Group continued the subsidized lease at a below market rent with the movie theater operator, Bowtie. Uh, Bowtie uh, unilaterally terminated the lease on Memorial Day weekend, not the landlord. Bowtie also closed their Summit movie theater, uh, which was also a fourplex. Both theaters were averaging less than 12 customers per show at the time they were each closed. The new owner has not formally filed any building plans for the property with the borough and has indicated it will be months before they submit any application. The last permit issued by the borough for the property was in 2016 to the former owner to remove an underground fuel storage tank. So there, so there is no demolition permit, although that's been on some of the social media. Uh, eight, the building is in a historic district, which will require the new owner to work with the Madison Historic Preservation Commission on the plans for the building. That's the, the old information, new information. Since the last council meeting, borough representatives, Jim and myself in particular, have met with the new property owner and their attorney to reinforce how important the theater is to Madison residents and to review the authority of the Historic Preservation Commission regarding their property. The Saxon Group indicated at that meeting that they intend to remain as the owner and are not currently interested in selling the building even at a premium over their $1.7 million purchase price. Even if they wish to sell, New Jersey law currently does not allow a public body to pay, among, uh, to pay above the market value for real property. The new owners are, however, willing to consider leasing space to a movie theater operator, and to that end, the borough coordinated a meeting the Saxon and a new theater operator, that way you can't indicate the name of that entity at the moment, and those talks between the current property owner and the new potential theater operator are continuing. The attorney for the new owner is also researching a development approach that could result in a full-service state-of-the-art movie theater with food and beverage service at uh, your seat and that's still being explored by them. Borough representatives encouraged the Historic Preservation Commission to start a discussion of their role in this process well before the owners submit their application. Our, our goal was not to have an application come in and the board have to react. 
on short notice. And that conversation was started by the HBC at their meeting on August 8th, and I think some residents here attended that meeting, and probably will talk about that. And the Green Village Road School Project uh, Community Center Space, which is a different project on, on, at the bottom of King's Road towards uh, the Madison Avenue, um, is underway and is in, you know, shaping up nicely. There's going to be 3,000 square feet of interior space, 16,000 square feet of external green space for performances, and that will be available in early 2018 for arts organizations, nonprofits, and performance groups on a courtesy basis. And the borough has been directed, or the borough administration has been directed by the mayor and council to continue to work with the property owner and the community for the best possible result, and we will continue to do that. And to that end, uh, Jim Burnett, our CFO, and I reached out and spoke to the property owner again today to keep the lines of communication open, and we'll continue to do that until we get a satisfactory result. So, uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you for the update. Communications and petitions. Yes, Mayor, uh, Council received an email August the 10th from John Larkin of Elm Street regarding cable service in town and an additional 58 signatures regarding uh, the movie theater were collected today. Thank you. Now we're on to the first of two invitations for discussion. This one is limited to agenda items so and the consent agenda resolution. So the agenda item today is DCA best practices authority discussion, and if you uh, have comments on that, we might even give you a gold star. Um, or you may comment on any resolution. If you want to com comment on other topics, you must wait until the second round coming up shortly. Anyone wishing to comment those uh, limitations, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And Jim, you're up with the DCA best practices. <coughs> This will be very quick, Mayor. Um, as Council knows and residents may know every year, the Department of Community Affairs, DCA, proffers best practices. It's a list of a number of items that um, the borough is, is tested on or quizzed on. Our state aid is predicated on us getting a high enough score, and every year we get in, in the high 90s. Um, one question that they have advanced is that the council have at least a cursory discussion um, regarding the authorities that they have and are they following their missions. Um, we last December had the Madison Housing Authority in um, for discussion. We actually had them in again this evening in executive session. Um, and we recently created the only other authority that um, uh, the borough is directly connected with, which was the New Jersey Public Power Authority. This was recently approved by council and recently created. As a matter of fact, this is the first budget year for that. That is an association or an authority that works directly with the Public Power Association of New Jersey, um, the nine municipalities that have um, electric utilities all work together. And that authority is going to give us the ability to contract together and um, do other uh, type of purchasing together. So, so with that, um, uh, Ray and I are here if you have any questions regarding the mission of each of these, but um, our recommendation is that both these authorities are following their mission, they're following their mission well, and by me just coming up here and saying this, we have now satisfied another point on the best practices checklist, and we can say <laughs> we discussed it on August 14th. So uh, not that we're looking to get points uh, easy, but uh, I think these authorities are well run, and so I'm here to answer any questions, but if not, we'll, we'll get another check. Any uh, questions for Jim? Thank you very much, and it's good to get another point on the test. I could have used you back in high school. Okay, well, this ordinance is for hearing. Will the clerk please read the statement? Okay, the ordinance scheduled for hearing was introduced by title and passed on first reading at the regular meeting of the council held on Monday, July 24, 2017. It was posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting the same. I call up Ordinance 32-2017 for second reading and ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison rescinding a portion of Ordinance 44-84 amending Chapter 185-32 entitled Vehicles and Traffic of, of the Borough Code to rescind the two-hour parking on Union Avenue. I open the hearing to anyone wishing to comment on Ordinance 32. Please step forward if you do. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 32-2017. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. I declare Ordinance 31-2017 adopted and finally passed, and I ask the clerk to publish. 32. Two, sorry. 
Third, oh. Sorry hmm. about that. <laughs> Trying to see if I'm paying attention here. <laughs> I declare Ordinance 32-2017 adopted and finally passed. And I ask the clerk to publish notice there in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance <laughs> with the law. And now we are on to uh, the second of invitation for discussion. This is when you may comment on any topic. Uh, please step forward, state your name, your address, write the same on the clipboard. Keep your comments to three minutes or less, though I will give you a three minute uh, warning at three minutes and you get a one minute grace period and uh, also use the guidelines I mentioned earlier tonight. Good evening. First, I want, I'm thrilled that a bamboo you know, ordinance will be considered. Uh, name, name and address again. Sorry, Jean Schur, 32 Kitchell Road. First of all, I want to thank you all. For, I want to thank, I hope my three minutes haven't started yet. Uh, yeah, I'll restart it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, I want to thank you all for your quick response to the bamboo issue, and I'm thrilled that a bamboo ordinance will be considered. My situation is a cautionary tale, and I just want to go through it with you for tonight. The original bamboo by my neighbor was planted by a previous owner just in front of his house by the road. It is so invasive that in about three years, the current neighbor was, to move, was able to move enough shoots to cover 600 feet of fence along the sides and the back of his yard. This was in 2009. The only break in the perimeter of his yard at this point is his driveway. Within one year, the bamboo was growing into our yard along about 350 feet of fence and actually going under and through our newly paved driveway in several areas and inside some of the landscaping we had just planted. In August 2010, we hired the man who planted the bamboo in my neighbor's yard, Bamboo Bob, to remediate it from our yard. He had to dig and locate the rhizomes and pull them out of the mother plant on the other side of the fence. He charged us over $1,700. The next year, the bamboo was, of course, spreading even more, and we were, of course, furious. Bamboo Bob came back in June 2011 and again removed the bamboo. The rhizomes, and this time, dug a very unsightly trench for about 350 feet along the property border to more easily locate the rhizomes that were infiltrating our yard. This time, he charged us $1,600 with a note that we, he would have to come back in five months, November, and again the following March to inspect it. We didn't want to pay him any more money because he was the one who planted it without containment, knowing that it would spread. So he's making money off of this. So we then hired Henry Peralta, who has worked on the bamboo two to three times a year for the approximate six years since then. In total, we have spent approximately six to $7,000 on the bamboo growing in our yard. This number will only increase every year until the bamboo is contained or removed. The unsightly trench has to be cleaned out and redug because the rhizomes keep growing into our yard eight years later. That is just the beginning. The bamboo is about 20 feet tall. This is the, the top 15 feet. We cut it at six feet, so this is the top, 15 feet, there were six feet below this, okay? We did it just yesterday. The bamboo is about 20 feet tall, and the fence is only six feet tall. At some point in my neighbor's yard, the bamboo is growing 10 to feet, 15 feet deep into his yard. The bamboo hangs over the fence because the fence is only six feet tall. We constantly have to prune it. The bamboo gets tangled into our trees and into our shrubbery. It also blocks our driveway. Whenever it sleets or snows, it comes down, it's frozen, and it doesn't, even when you drive through it, it stays down and it blocks the driveway. We'll show you. It is destroying the border fence, and once the fence falls down, it will be lying 20 feet into our driveway and yard. Uh, one minute. The land, besides the landscaper, my husband and I have spent countless hours every season pruning the bamboo, cutting the bamboo, and cleaning the bamboo out of our yard. To add insult to injury, my neighbor apparently sells his new bamboo shoots back to Bamboo Bob. I have seen Bamboo Bob on at least two occasions come with his workers, wrap up the bamboo for his business, and drive away. Bamboo is an aggressive and invasive species. It can damage driveways, sidewalks, house foundations, sewer lines, water pipes, and more. Bamboo lowers property values. I'm a real estate agent. This sta the states of New York and Connecticut have banned bamboo, as well as many cities and towns throughout the United States. Many New Jersey towns have adopted ordinances, including Florham Park, and now we hope Madison will do the same. I'm asking for bamboo not to be allowed to be planted, 
for existing bamboo contained within 30 days and not to be able to grow within 20 feet of the bam of a property border since it's 20 feet long and hefty fines given for every day of noncompliance. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for sharing and uh, careful with the, I think Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Dodge might be uh, a little concerned about it. The audio visual, but that certainly helps. Um, again, we'll, we'll get some of those comments over to the Board of Health, and um, I, I would encourage you if you want to share it also tomorrow night at the Board of Health. Good evening. I'm Larry Sherm, the second half of this act. Uh, this is the show and tell portion. Um, Jean had, had um, as she went through and told sort of our story, we, f we thought that some pictures would help further illustrate her points. So this is, this is the continuation of the show and tell portion. Uh, the show is going to be distributing pictures so you can just see them. They have, the, the tell is going to be captions that are actually at the bottom of each, at the bottom, uh, of, each of the pictures. And then uh, I'm taking my, my wife's advice and I'm going to be quiet. Uh, I get that advice pretty often. Um, if, if, of course, if anybody has any questions during, during this three-minute period, which is probably about two minutes now, well, feel free to ask. Anything that's distributed has to go through the clerk. <laughs> there you go, Mayor. We see it. So those, those are what grows underground. So you're... Actually, you've got a. This is part of your time, just so you know. Okay. Oh no, I know. Any anything else that? Um... No, I didn't want to. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy. To... Yeah, we we, we just pre present and. Uh... Okay. Otherwise. Uh... Only because I have tomorrow. Okay. Pat, Pat is. Real question. Are you coming to the Board of Health tomorrow night? Yes, we'll be there. We'll be, she'll bring this. Okay, then. I was going to ask her, but if you're coming, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Thank you. Hello, Terry. Teresa Romano, 29 West Lane. I'm saving my props for tomorrow. <clears throat> Running bamboo, such as yellow groove bamboo, is like cancer to land. Being invaded by yellow bamboo is the worst continual nuisance I can imagine anyone inflicting on his neighbor as it destroys land and everything in its path. Yellow groove bamboo robs you of your quality of life and free use of your property. The chief roles of municipal government, besides public safety and road maintenance, is regulation of land use. I urge this council and mayor to ban the planting of bamboo in Madison. Follow the lead of Florham Park, Rockaway, the state of New York, the state of Connecticut, and pass a bamboo ordinance that will protect the borough residents affected by this invasive, destructive plant. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to be heard? <clears throat> Jesse Esposito, Community Place. I just want to personally thank you, Mayor. I know I came in here and complained a lot, but I want to personally thank you for coming out and helping me address the situation on community. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, and that's and just to bring you an update, uh, Jesse, I have requested to uh, Lou um, Riccio and the for the uh, Madison Housing Authority to send a request to the borough of Madison to that they're willing, they want to abandon the section of um, community place from Cook to their Thank you. Uh, perceived property line, and then Jesus it will come come back to this body, and then uh, it will be enforcement of parking regulations. All that would be like the rest of the town if that. So we'll, we'll be waiting for that to happen. Thank you so so much, Mayor. I just wanted to personally thank you. I'm sure. You know, you get a lot of negative comments in here, and I wanted to be one to make it a positive. So, Thanks Mayor, for coming, Jesse. I'm very grateful for you coming out and um, working with me. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thank you, Council. Thank you, everyone. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Sandy.
Okay, thank you. Um, as Liz name, mentioned. Name and address is. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandy Kolakowski, Park Avenue. Um, as Liz mentioned, I dropped off the petitions that we received after the last time we submitted them. We had submitted 1,200. We reported that we um, had 1,500. Now we have over 1,700. I don't know if you're supposed to be looking at the comments, but if you are, I really urge you to take a look. All of these petitions came in after the last submittal. It's, it's extensive, and people really took time to share their thoughts on kind of what the theater means to them, uh, what living in Madison means to them, and I think it's, it's really a very valuable uh, resource. Um, So, per Borough Attorney Giacobbe's advice, I guess you can't comment on what I would contend is one of the most unifying issues Madison residents have voiced their opinion on in some time. So we're in a difficult predicament. The community is not going to waver on this. The theater's closing has impacted families, like the problem one parent told me about this weekend. Her daughter wants to go see the Emoji movie. They have to go to East Hanover to see it. Mom has to buy a $15 ticket to stay because she's not comfortable leaving her daughter there with just her friends, something she wouldn't hesitate to do at our local theater. The answer ends up being no to the emoji movie. We need to rescue the theater. We know this isn't going to be easy, but we know it wasn't easy to launch a water company, form our own borough, start an electric company, elevate railroad tracks, create the Madison Housing Authority, build the senior housing at Chateau Thierry, and the list goes on. As you all know, it took groups of dedicated people with vision to pull those things off, and we thank them for doing the hard work of providing those public amenities that we enjoy today and that make Madison one of the best towns anywhere. So I'll ask you to indulge me for a moment. Let's imagine it's seven years from now. The year is 2025. That year, the mayor and council and borough residents celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Madison Theater. During the past seven years, it had undergone renovations to expand its scope of operation, showing first-run movies, simulcasts of Broadway and Lincoln Center performances, and providing stage and screen rentals for Community Arts Group with shared office space for local nonprofits, the theater remains the heart of downtown Madison, drawing over 100,000 patrons with an economic impact exceeding $7 million annually. At its centennial celebration, it's nominated by the League of Historic Theaters for its historical and continuing positive impact in our community. One minute, Sandy. Isn't that a better scenario than lamenting the theater building's demise. I urge you again to act in the best interests of Madison and rescue the theater, and I trust that this governing body has both the vision and strength to honor our past and provide something truly meaningful for future generations. Thank you very much, Sandy. Thank you. A anyone else wishing to be heard? Seen, okay, Kathy. Kathy Daly, West End Avenue. When the council adopted the welcoming community resolution on February 6th, Mayor, you explained that, quote, the idea of a welcoming community was started when you saw Assemblywoman Myla J.C. post on Facebook the resolution passed by her hometown of Maplewood. You felt it was essential, quote, unquote, essential, that Madison follow that lead and do it quickly because we needed, quote, to send a message to Washington and to our neighboring communities in Morris County. In other words, from the very beginning, this entire welcoming community effort was never really about Madison. The primary goal, what was most important, was to follow Assemblywoman J.C.'s lead. The secondary goal was to do that quickly. The third stated goal was to send a message to Washington. 
The fourth goal that you mentioned was to send a message to other towns in Morris County. So you see, it was never really about Madison. As you know, I have opposed this resolution from the start, along with many others who feel as strongly as I do, that Madison has always been generous in its welcome. Over this past weekend, it occurred to me, not only is Madison no more welcoming now than it was before you adopted your resolution six months ago, but your re resolution actually has backfired. Madison has become fractured since the passage of this resolution. Instead of being more friendly and welcoming, a new animosity has begun to form between neighbors and people who previously had been friends or friendly acquaintances. Residents like me who have asked questions or who have requested more reflection on the issues related to this resolution have been called hateful and fear-mongering and other far worse names that are equally inaccurate. Community groupthink seems to have become a requirement, not only here in the Madison Borough Council, but all throughout the town. If you don't display a sign on your front lawn declaring that, quote, hate has no home here, it is assumed by default that you are a hater. This is the climate that your welcoming resolution has inspired. You haven't sent a message to Washington. By thrusting Madison into the national debate on federal immigration policy, you've brought the progressive rhetoric and political division of Washington right here to Madison. And it hasn't benefited the people of Madison one whit. One, one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your comments. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Uh, please, as a reminder, we always hold applause so we don't uh, single people out. Christine. My name's Christine Shore. I live at 31 Shady Lawn Drive. And I came tonight, um, although this is way past my bedtime, uh, because I really want to be more actively involved in my community. The thing that caught my attention a long time ago was the welcoming resolution. I've heard at every single one of these meetings that we are so welcoming, we don't need to call ourselves welcoming, which is an argument I still don't understand. I like what you did. You are a duly elected representative group. You have carefully listened over and over and over again to people claiming that this is not what it says it is, not what you can read it to be, not what it is in practice, but some other paranoid fantasy of, of propaganda. I live in Madison, I pay taxes, and you guys speak perfectly clearly for me. And for a lot of people I know, I welcome your courage, I welcome your clarity, I welcome that Madison is a welcoming committee, a community that welcomes people of other color and nations, I don't think it was divisive. I don't see why it was a problem at all since it hasn't in any way affected the application of existing laws and practices. So I would like to thank you over and over and over again for reiterating that this is a, co a community that equally respects everyone who lives here and their opinions. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Please hold, please hold applause. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Dennis Schreiber, Amelia Court. I really didn't plan to say anything this evening. I wanted to come and listen and learn and hear what had to be said. But 
Mr. Mayor, in all due respect with your opening comments, I, I want to congratulate you and the council. Pat yourselves on the back. You've done a great job. You've stonewalled us on all our comments, observations, and suggestions for the resolution. Now you say it's a wonderful thing and it's going to stand as is. Then you say, let's make this a better community and work together. Well, you accomplish exactly the opposite. You've driven a huge wedge in the middle of this town. This woman who just commented, she's as far away from where we are, and probably we would have all been very friendly had you not done this. I'm taking a lot of grief online for my stance. I'm not anti-immigration, but I think you did us a huge injustice for something that was completely unnecessary. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting, and we move on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for September 11, 2017. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members, public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 33-2017, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $50,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of body cameras for Madison police officers. Mayor, I move Ordinance 33-2017. I second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 34, 2017, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, appropriating $65,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for police firing range improvements. Mayor, I move Ordinance 34 2017. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 35, 2017, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 195 of the Borough Code Land Development Ordinance regarding changes in building occupancy and use. Mayor, I move Ordinance 35-2017. I'll second. Council discussion. We'll call a vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Ordinance 36, 2017, and you turn the page. <laughs> Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $190,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a 20-ton truck. Mayor, I move Ordinance 36-2017. I second that motion. Any council discussion? Uh, I'd just like to make a comment uh, on this. I've had a couple of conversations with, um, with Ken O'Brien, who is the new uh, superintendent of DPW. Um, this was in our capital budget for 180,000, and he's asking for another 10,000 on this. But this truck will do lots, lots more, and it's more efficient, and uh, it's going to help a lot in moving the leaf uh, situation. So um, that was a great thing that he's come up with. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call a vote. Mr. Landman? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Okay. Consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move uh, consent agenda resolutions R 2013-2017 to R 228-2017. I'll second the motion. Any that need to be pulled or any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. 
The current fund, $440,887.39. General capital fund, $336,724.68. Electric capital, uh, electric operating fund, $209,110.98. The electric capital fund, $825. The water operating fund, $13,506.35, and the trust, $13,149.70. Total is $1,014,204.10. Mayor, um, I move the approval of the vouchers. I'll second it. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. I'd like to announce the following appointment, not requiring um, council approval, and this is a dual appointment both to the Environmental Commission and to the Planning Board. And Huber, 54 Maple Avenue, Class 4 Environment, Environmental Committee representative to the Planning Board and also rep a, uh, onto the Commission, as mentioned. It's for the three-year unexpired term through December 31st, 2017. And I also would like to uh, make the following appointments requiring council confirmation for the Local Emergency Planning Council for 2017, OEM Coordinator John Rafter, OEM Deputy Coordinator Lieutenant Joseph Longo and Bruce Goodwin, OEM Assistant Deputy Coordinator Mike Chagru. I have a motion. Mayor, I'll move um, the Local Emergency Planning Council for uh, 2017. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move we adjourn. Well, thank you. Yeah, if you can't make it, there's any They may not. They may move on more. They may just discuss it and then. Oh, sure. You were moved. Yeah. 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 Yeah.